Hi everyone, this is Christopher Tamik for the Reaper blog, and today I'll be showing a customized region render workflow in Reaper. I've discovered this after playing around with a couple of different scripts. The first one that I discovered that was really interesting was Heda's region and markers from items script. This basically looks at track names and if they adhere to a certain format, like regions 1000 red, they show up in here. This is a hidden track. I can click on the name of the track and it mutes the track. And if it's unmuted, I can create empty media items or drag items to this track. And it creates regions based on the item boundaries. One of the benefits of using regions this way is that if you're using this bar to also navigate and zoom your session, then now all the region management is based on items. You can trim, you can split, you can move, you can, you can cut and paste and duplicate regions. The region names are based on the item names first, but if you change the item notes, the region name also changes. The item notes can contain multiple lines, although this will not be displayed in the region names. So what we are looking at right here are six variations of one asset for a game. What I used to do to export all of these would be to create regions around the selected items, paste the asset name, add a variation, maybe copy it with underscore, select the next variation, create a region, paste, O2, and so on and so forth. Then I would open the region render matrix, Select the master mix for the regions of the current asset. Make sure the asset is soloed. And then hit render. Region render matrix. These are mono assets, so I'll select my mono preset. Going to the right folder, render two files. And we're done. If now I've implemented my assets in game and evaluated the sound design value, and I've decided that they maybe need another layer. I can add another track. I can add some debris to the sound. But now the regions that I use to export my assets don't line up with the actual sound design anymore. I can increase the regions here, but this doesn't adhere to snapping. And also I have the navigation bar up here mapped to move and zoom my session as well. So it kind of gets in the way. I dug deeper into what the community is up to and I found a bunch of scripts that really helped me speed up this workflow and automated a whole bunch. I'll show you how that works now. So let's pretend this track does not quite exist yet. So we can do revisions later. I'll select the assets that I've designed and I'm making sure that I have one asset per track per stack. If, for example, this layer was split up and crossfaded like this, I'd make sure not to select this track for now. So I'll select the tracks that only have one asset per stack per track. I'll select the track that I want the regions to be based off. So this is my asset track. Maybe let me rename this to the file asset, actually. I'll select this track. Hit F4, I'm being prompted to define the item nodes, to define the region names. I'll select replace, the asset name, and two digits of enumeration with an offset of zero starting at 01. Hit OK. And now if I run the HEDA region script, I immediately have regions properly enumerated, red 01, red 02, Red 03, 04, 05, 06. Now I want to add these items to the groups so that the regions also incorporate them. And this is basically the same workflow as with iteration. So I'll select one item that's in the group and then hit F6 for each item that I want to add to that group. Or I can select a text item, 
text item. Select all the text items that I want to update. Hit F5 and now the regions incorporate all the assets. Select the text items and update. Now to update the regions, we all again have to run the script. Close the script, open the region render matrix, select the regions to render and hit render. I usually also have a video specific track that contains reference video regions. And if we run the script right now, it will add one region with the item notes ref underscore asset name. So if I'm exporting, I can export first all the regions with the preset. Then I'll deselect all the regions, select the reference video region, hit render, select my reference video preset. So now I can supply the game developer with a reference video synced to actual actions in gameplay. A quick look at the notes processor. So this processor is a script that runs on items and manipulates the item notes data. And for my purposes, I've actually selected edit here, opened the item notes processor in the script editor that's built into Reaper and simply set the default action to replace and the default text to enumerate. The item notes processor has a lot more functions. It can replace, append, prepend, create new lines and item notes, etc. It can enumerate, it can insert track numbers. But for my purposes, every time I call the script, I just want to enumerate at the very end two digits and I always want to replace the item notes. So that's what I've set it up to do here by default. The custom action F4 that I initially used to group the items and create the text items and manipulate the item notes functions like this. First, a script groups the items across tracks in stacks. That's why it's important to not have multiple items overlapping or right next to each other in the same stack. The script can't handle that. Another workaround other than the one shown in the tutorial before would be to glue the items. The next step is creating a text item on the selected track, which is the track of the asset. Then a script selects the items on the selected track within the time selection. And because I'm using marquee selection and time selection at the same time, the time selection will envelop all the text items on the selected track. And then we run the item notes processor on the text items to create the region names. The custom action F6 to add new items to the current group functions like this. When I have this item selected, it selects all the items in the current group, which will be these two and the text item. I'm hovering over this item. Then while the first action selects all three of these grouped items, the next action will select the item that's currently under the mouse cursor. And the third action will group all the selected items. The custom action F5 to update the text item lengths is a script called set selected items start and end according to min and max positions of other items in their groups. This script can be found on this website together with a bunch of other scripts that are item grouping and region management related. The entire script pack is hosted on a private repository that ties into Rear Pack and costs 25 euros. I think it's well worth it for anyone using this workflow to enhance the speed at which they're creating assets. The Heda region script is available from Hector on his website. Both Heda and Raymond deserve great respect for their work for the community. Please support them. It's incredible what these guys do for the Reaper user base. You can find all the links to all the scripts that I'm using in the video description. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye.